Welcome to Rocket to Anywhere, the podcast where I never want to open the show because I think it's a dull intro. So, yeah. Um, I'm Sophia, and that's Corban. Okay, well, anyway, these are takes. The, the first one is Sophia the Food Historian. Our pantry is, like, so tiny, but you can fit so much stuff in there. Yeah. And it's, like, it's, you it's lose the, it. It's the Narnia wardrobe of stuff. You go there, and you're, like, you find chicken salad stuff that you lost two years ago. Oh, yeah. Um, Last year, I found, you know those packets that we used to take to school? Um, Like, those tuna packets, you know? Oh, yeah, the, I forgot what okay. it's called. Okay, so, back then, they had... You know, I don't know if they still saw them with, like, peppermint thingies in them. They still do. Okay. Well, back then, they were green, and now they're blue. Uh-huh. Okay. So, I found a packet last year, and, and I knew it was from second grade. Okay, last year I was in sixth grade. So, I, I found it, <laughs> and it was from second grade, because it had a green peppermint thingy in it, and not blue. You're you're the official so, tuna yeah. package historian. Well, yeah, anyway. you see, this one has a green peppermint. Anyway, I didn't eat it because, you know, I never ate it. I actually only ate the crackers, the mayonnaise, and the cheese. And the, back then it had cheese. And, <laughs> and <laughs> That's not good cheese anymore. And the, and the peppermint. So, yeah. Wait, you said you didn't eat the peppermint. No, I ate the peppermint. So, you ate the, the whole crackers, thing. crackers, the mayonnaise, and the cheese, not the tuna. Oh, even yeah. Even though it was called tuna <laughs> something. Our second outtake is my story on how I got free Fosties for a year, as opposed to Carter, who hopefully will get free chicken nuggets for a year. No, did, did I ever tell you guys the story of how I got free Frosties for me for a year for free? I should. Talk oh about yeah, it. because you found it on the the, yes. the floor of the ninety nine cents. So store. we were at the ninety nine cents. I actually found it and I kicked it because I was gonna I kicked it away from you and then you're like, oh look, I just saw this. Okay, so last year, and I don't think Wendy's does it anymore, but they have this pro- program. Well, they're not gonna do it if you keep talking about it. <laughs> yeah, they have a program where you can buy this keychain and then every time you go to Wendy's you get a free frosty. Well, the frost the Win- the frosties in your house the Wendy's near our house. They never read the fine print, and they always just gave us the Frosties without us buying anything. So when I saw this car on the floor, this keychain, it says free Frosties for a year. I literally got free Frosties for a whole year and bought nothing from Wendy's. You know, I've always, we talked about things we've won before. You know, we should, I should have said this. I won free Frosties for a year. Wow. I accomplished something. Here we have our story on how we got emotional on I Want a Dog. Okay, you did it every single time and you listened to it for like a really, really, really long time. I didn't do it. Crying in the back of the van. Uh oh. <laughs> with, with the headphones. Excuse me, we were on the way to Six Flags with spray bottles, okay? Uh, German Shepherd? I don't really know if I want a German Shepherd. I never actually wanted it. There you I go. I just wanted a dog. Oh. And I oh. got a dog because I had to buy it for myself. Don't, don't get me started on the musical. Here we go. What? I want a Oh, dog. yeah. Okay, the first time we watched that that video, yes, we crying. actually almost started crying. Uh-huh. It's a very emotional piece if you've never seen it before. I think it's Reading Rainbow or something. Oh, uh, no. It wasn't Reading Rainbow. Maybe it was the Westinghouse. It's like this huge musical somewhat about this girl who wants this dog. Oh, we cried, sitting in the Costco parking lot. If you've never seen it before, you have to watch it. It's it's great. <laughs> if we watch it now, we're gonna be like, why were we crying at this? Next is um, half full, half empty, which I I think I was talking. Not sure. It's a discussion on optimism and pessimism. You can't even say it right, and that was you. I was saying my McDonald's thing. That I can't remember at the moment. Uh, 
on the uh, place jokes that we've been doing over the past few weeks, what's the saddest planet? I have no idea. Saturn. Uh, but it's Saturn, not Saturn. Well, it's very sad. It's what planet do you sit on, Saturn? Are the rings half full or half empty? That's the question. Wait, wait, are they what? Are the are Saturn's rings half full or half empty? They're just full. You know, when people ask me the, the that question with the cup, I'm like, it's just halfway. <laughs> well, no, I'm like, well, it's not halfway because the bottom of the cup is smaller than the top, which means there's less water in the bottom, which means scientifically there is it's half empty. This is a, a little little story um, that only 90s kids remember. And I'm not a 90s kid, so I remember. So A, a 2000s yeah. kid. Yeah. One day, a woman had 100 children. She sadly did not have the creativity... <laughs> she sadly didn't have the creativity to name them all unique names. So... She named one. She named each one from numbers one to one hundred. Each one of them, one of them was named one. The next was two, and so on and so on, all the way to one hundred. But in a tragic accident, ninety-nine of the children died. The only one who survived was the one named ninety. Ninety eventually grew up and grew up and lived a whole life. And she even had a few children of her own. One day, while Nighty's children were playing outside, they stumbled upon a stray dog, and they decided to keep it. Nighty did not want the children to have a dog, so they hid it and named it This, so that they could talk to it around their mom without her knowing. They would say, let's go take this outside, and things like that behind her, their mom's back. One day, while 90s children were not paying attention, this walks out into the middle of the street and gets hit by a car. This eventually dies, and 90s kids don't tell their mom even then. No one else ever hears about this ever again. Only 90s kids remember this. Huh. Somebody was very creative. I feel like someone was pressed to write a story for a news organization or something, and, like, that's the best they could come up with. This, the person who, this. Who wrote this. The person who wrote, uh, who reposted this to Instagram, they got it off a of Tumblr from somebody named the Bored Cat. <laughs> okay. That guy was bored. <laughs> This next outtake is me reading a book I wrote in 2009 about the year 2010. Well, that was the last joke. Last uh, episode, episode 25, I started a new thing where I'm going to tell you about uh, holidays because uh, Ryan Matlock stopped um, doing uh, his holiday videos on his YouTube channel. And I forgot to prepare for this. So while I was cleaning last week, uh, you know, spring break cleaning, I found this book that I did in 2009. I'm not sure what year I was doing. It's spring cleaning, not spring break cleaning. Anyway, I found this book that I did in 2009. I think I was in second grade or something, first grade probably. Uh, and it's called Happy New Year. And it's a journal of uh, New Year's Eve of 2009 going into 2010. And so I'm going to read this to you. Happy New Year. My name, Corban Garcia. Think it, draw it. This picture is what comes to mind when I think about New Year's Eve. I left it blank because I thought it would be artistic. New Year's Eve. I stayed up until 9 p.m. on New Year's Eve. That was awesome. On <laughs> Yes. On New Year's Eve, I was at a relative's house. That was awesome. On New Year's Eve, I usually... And you had to circle from what you do. You could uh, pick... Uh, one or two or something, and you could pick from everything, but I just circled eat too much food, 
and watch movies. And then on the other line, I put eat turkey. I don't know what I'm thinking of here. I just want to know how old you were. Uh, I don't know. I hope it was less than 10. Well, it was 2010. Then you were... I was 8 or 9. Wow. I was 7, actually, I think. No, you were 8. Oh, look, it says right here, all together, I celebrated New Year's Eve with 7 people. Oh, that hasn't... I don't know. Anyway, um, staying up until midnight can be hard to do for people. The first person to fall asleep at my house was... And then it's... Don't you dare say me. Hold on, it says my sister, and then it's erased out, and then it says Sophia. Okay. Okay. I, I, uh, uh-uh. uh. It's 2009, okay? You I were, was. You were five years four old. Or five. Yeah, okay. so you wouldn't have stayed up that late. Yeah, duh. Neither okay. were you. Okay, now listen how practical I am from this, this thing. Babies born on New Year's Day are called New Year babies. Many hospitals honor the first baby born on New Year's Day with special gifts. If you could give the first New Year baby a special gift, you would give the baby what? And I put some pampers. <laughs> I, I'm so originally creative. It says, I turned seven. Uh, I turned seven on my birthday in 2009. So I was seven years old. It says. That clears that up. <laughs> These are five places that I went in 2009 that I really enjoyed going to. Pump it up. Which I think is obsolete now. I don't think they exist anymore. That was fun, though. Austin. No, no, no. Going Bananas was better than Pump It Up. Well, yeah. Or that. But we only went there, like, twice. Yeah. Uh, Six Flags. Oh, look. I forgot that was the old name. I was like, what? What's this place? So, it's the Incredible Pizza Company. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that's that's the old name for It's Family Food and Fun. And then I put Amazing Jake's. Yeah, that was fun, too. Yeah, they had just opened that year, as far as I know, in our town. Looking forward to 2010, I am going to be 8 years old. And then it says, complete the sentence. I hope in 2016 that I learn how to make cake. In 2016? I mean, sorry, 2010. Oh, I was like, in 2016? Yeah, I'm not thinking that Yeah, you just learned how to make cake. Yeah. It says, um, what I'm going to do in 2010... It says, uh, uh, the thing is, this this book was written in first person, so it sounds like I'm writing it, but I'm not. So it says, I want to read a book for myself, not for school. This is the book I'm going to read. And then I put it in all caps like it was in the book. Dinosaur Cove, catching the velociraptor and the stampede of the Indomantosaurus. At first, I thought you were going to say, catching the velocity of dinosaurs. I want to be more organized. To be more organized in 2010, I am going to make my bed. Okay, you've literally said that you want to be organized every single year. Yes. Okay, if I look out this door. Since I knew what organization was, that's what he said. Okay, I just looked out the closet door right now. My bed is not made. My bed. Yeah, your bed is like mm, junk all over it. Uh-huh. And the mattress isn't even on the bed. Yeah, it's the mattress the isn't door. on the bed because it's against the door, keeping the sound in the room. Uh, I'm going to help my family keep our home clean. <laughs> Here's one simple thing I'm going to do to help out with that. Okay, they gave me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines to write. And I only used half a line and wrote, I am going to vacuum. Uh-huh. Who do you think washed the dishes? Okay. Me. The and rest, I broke a lot. <laughs> the rest of the book is empty, but I thought, hey, it's 2017. I'm going to finish the rest of this book. So the question, the next question that I left empty was, I spend way too much time blank. This year, I'm going to do less of that. You know what I'm going to put there? What? Sleeping. I spend too much time sleeping. I need to go to sleep on time and wake up early, which I'm trying to do with the bride. And you're totally not doing it right now because it's yeah. 11.30 uh-huh. p.m. Mm-hmm. I'm going to save some money to buy this. This year, I wanted to save some money 
to buy um, the Pro Suite of Apple apps. So I, well, actually, write it. Actually, write it in the book like right now. I don't have a pen. Find one. I'll write it at the end of the show while I'm editing this. Yeah, and then he's going to change the answer. I, I'm going to eat something in 2010 that I did not eat in 2009. This is what I'm going to try. Well, I should put... I Okay, then I did not eat vegetables. Now I eat vegetables. I know it's an amazing turn of events. Kids who don't like broccoli, you are missing out. Broccoli is amazing. I don't know what you're thinking. Unless you're allergic to broccoli... You should try it. Broccoli with cheese is the best. Yes. Do not eat it when it's hot. Eat it when it's Yeah, and I'm not talking about like salad broccoli that's not cooked. I'm talking about overcooked, fully steamed, melt in your mouth broccoli. That's the only type of broccoli that's good. Not stir fry, the overcooked one. The next section of the book is called Resolution Fun. Two exclamation marks. Come up with a funny or serious New Year's resolution your teacher might make this year. What is it? I have no idea what I would put here because I'm not in public school anymore. Yeah. Come up with a New Year's resolution for someone in your family. Who is the resolution for and what is the resolution? Don't do it for me. Don't do it for me. I'm sorry, but I got to put it for Sophia. Sophia should spend (gasps) less time on social media. I don't spend any time on it. I should mention by now this whole book is written in Comic Sans. So. What do you mean? Yeah, the whole, the font. It's Comic Sans. Like, that was every teacher's favorite font. Like, you're printing a flyer, you put it in Comic Sans. Next, who is your favorite cartoon character? Write a very silly New Year's resolution for your cartoon favorite cartoon character. I think it was Thomas then, right? No, I just started watching Rescue Heroes. Like, we'd get home from school and then start oh, yeah, watching yeah, that. Yeah. Like, my New Year's resolution for the Rescue Heroes. Make so, more episodes. <laughs> yeah, make more episodes, because... I, I mean, if you're not dead, you know. No, like, my New Year's resolution for them is uh, make multiple teams around the world so that they don't have to travel everywhere. And maybe teach the people how to survive so that they don't have to rescue them every time. That's not <laughs> silly, but... Oh, well. Wait, but they did make more episodes, remember? Because they made that new one. Yeah, they they started naming it Cops. Okay, the last page of the book is called My Resolution. Make your own resolution for 2016, 2016, 2010. What is it? My resolution for 2010 would have been um, start, give a series of unfortunate events another chance. Like, I didn't understand it and I gave up. I would have given it another chance. Okay. How long do you think you'll be able to keep your New Year's resolution? Only two days, probably. And then I'm going to tell five people what my New Year's resolution is this year. I'm sure more than five people have heard this, so um, fellow chips, you have heard my New Year's resolution for seven years ago. (laughs) I've reached into this book. That was a nostalgia trip. We recently heard that Word Girl, I mean I recently heard that Word Girl was coming back from an independent studio so we had a little bit of discussion and uh, did a little bit of audition what's your definition of discussion a talking about that breaking news word girl is coming back but not from pbs or the tin can studio who used to do it it's the small organization in oregon who's bringing word girl back and I don't know how they're going to do it, but I just saw the announcement. He's, like, obsessed with Word Girl now. Uh, yes. It's like his favorite team. Says the super fan. I'm not a super okay, fan. I'm I'll, not even a I'll, fan. Okay, I'm TJ. And I'm... TJ's friend. Mm, not really. Unless you are Word Girl. Oh, yeah. I and should be Word Girl. You're, you're Becky. No, I sh- yeah, I should be... I was about to say, no, I should be Becky, but no, that's the or same you're, person. No, you're Bob. You're more of a Bob. Then who's Word Girl? Definitely not Peace. Taco. Oh, yeah. Have you seen it? Okay. Do I sound like Violet? Well, I can sound like Scoops. That's not Scoops. That's, that's not Scoops either. <laughs> that's stuffed. Stuffed mouse. <laughs> Scoops. 
milk. I can be the help guy. I'm the I'm the help guy. You ready? Help! Doctor Two Brains is robbing the bank. Wait, is this the police station? No, it's Becky's house. Oh, help! Look at the Rory make a bird girl. Well, that's all for this episode of These Never Made It, the second one. If you want to hear the first one, that's at rt.space slash T-N-M-I. This, this rocket, rocket has, has landed. landed.